So welcome to another edition of Build Mode Workshop Edition. I'm Brian Gardner, and I will be demonstrating today building uh, various call to action sections, conversion focused uh, for uh, your website. And uh, I'm one to always say a well-designed website with no traffic is a well-designed website with no traffic. And so this morning I was thinking about it, a well-designed website with traffic and no conversion is a well-designed website with traffic and no conversion, right? In some fashion, uh, websites exist to ultimately uh, encourage some call to action, whether it's a newsletter sign up, whether it's buying a product, whether it's following on social media, there's always some element uh, outside of you know the small cases in which you just really wanna legitimately give information. But generally speaking, people put websites out uh, on the web because they want people to do a thing. And so as I was thinking about what to do for this workshop, I was like, you know, I like to build. And I think a lot of people like seeing how things are built with blocks and seeing the actual building process and understanding which blocks are used to accomplish each thing. I think it's super helpful. And uh, we've had a lot of people say, yes, it's very helpful to actually see it happen. I try to do it. I can't figure this out or there's some limitations or I think there's some limitations. And so uh, what I will do today is just walk, uh, walk us through uh, four different types of call to actions. And uh, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Uh, but before I do that, I just wanted to make the announcement uh, that Frost version 1.0 has officially been added to the WordPress theme directory, uh, which is something we're really, really excited about. Uh, Sam just dropped the link. You can check it out. You can download it there. Uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, activity already, downloads and active installations. Of course, Frost has been around for almost two years, so that makes sense. Uh, and so what we're going to see today are new patterns that I built that will be added to Frost very soon. Uh, maybe later this week or early next week, it'll be, I'll do an update to Frost. Uh, and these patterns will also make their way in there. So uh, even though we're going to learn how to build them today, they'll be able to be inserted into your website with one click as soon as they're added. So um, that being said, uh, thank you for the congratulations in the, in the chat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we are going to start. All right, so Sam has some links to each of these four patterns. Uh, maybe before I do each one, you could drop the link to the corresponding pattern or all of them at once, not a big deal. And um, I'm gonna be working locally here, but what you will see are these patterns on the Live Frost website. They're sort of there in preparation of that update that I just talked about. So uh, author box, at the end of every blog post, uh, most people wanna show an author box, which is, um, who wrote the post, a little bit about them, perhaps a way to connect. Uh, and so I'm working locally here. I have installed a blank version of Frost. This is what you see when you activate the theme. Uh, and so up here will be the four uh, patterns that we're going to build today. So again, uh, typically Frost ships with sort of two versions of each pattern, like a light and dark. Uh, it's very easy to uh, and I say that subjectively, of course, it's very easy to take a pattern and then change colors, but in the spirit of trying to help folks out and give them a few options for each one, uh, we've been typically um, adding both light and dark versions. And so uh, in this walkthrough, I will only just do the light version. So uh, this is an author box. You can see it's got the author avatar. It's got uh, my name. It's got the description of me. And then there's social media icons. And so what I'll do is I'm going to go back into the dashboard and I'm going to just build this on top of what's there there just so we can kind of have it for reference. Um, but I'm going to pop open list view very quickly so we can see what we're looking at. Uh, each one of these is within a group. And so this block here is a group block. And inside of it, you see the avatar block, the post author name block, the post author biography block, and then the social icons. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and I'm going to just start building this. And so at the end of each uh, particular pattern that I build, we'll have time for questions. Uh, if, if you see something that I'm doing or want some clarification, uh, please feel free to just drop it in the chat so we have them ready. So at the end of each pattern build, we'll just go through and just kind of address any questions that may have happened. So uh, like I said, this is wrapped in a group block. So I just added the group block here. And so what I want to do, you can see that there's a border around the group block. Uh, and I'll do that at the end, but I want to add the avatar first. So you can see we've got the avatar here. I'm going to just go ahead and add all of the things I want 
Um, yeah. Wrong block. This is WordPress has two different types of author um, author blocks. We want post author name. So there's my name. Uh, this right here is going to be the author bio. So I'll get back into my group. Post author biography. And we've got some social media icons. So I will come in here and add that block. Uh, we're going to just do a few. We'll add Twitter. And we'll see, you'll see that obviously uh, these, each of these blocks needs to be styled and have settings applied to them, which I'll also walk through uh, so that we can see how we go from just inserting these blocks to um, the final product. Okay, so I'm going to pop open list view. And so here we again, oops, WordPress is finicky. Okay, so here's our group and we've got the four things that we need in there. Uh, for starters, I am, I've got the group block highlighted and I'm going to style that a little bit. So I'm just going to go here down to border. I'm going to add the one pixel border around it, which you can now see. Uh, and then I want to add a little spacing because we want to have spacing. So uh, Frost comes with what's called step spacing. And so you have the ability to sort of go through these uh, essentially t-shirt sized steps. Uh, you can also pop that open if you wanted to do a hard coded pixel value. Uh, and I believe there's other units that you can use as well, but uh, because Frost is sort of intrinsically built so that we can uh, use the step spacing and the fluid spacing, which means the um, it's into Frost, it breaks down very well on mobile. So we've got our group uh, wrapped in a border and we've got some padding. I'm going to go down to the avatar block and I want to have it centered. So I'm just going to come up here and do a line center. And because I want border radius, I will go to the settings section over here for the avatar and I'll just throw in some border radius. Uh, similarly, the post author name, I want to center it and I want to make some changes to it visually. So uh, I will maybe just make it a little bit larger. You can see some settings. If you wanted to link that to your author archive page, you can, uh, and so on. So I've got my name there. I'm trying to remember how I got that bold, but, uh, and this is, uh, the post author biography. Uh, and that is found if you go edit, I won't go there yet, but if you go to your edit user screen, there's a section in there called biography. What you put in there is what gets output in this post author biography. Uh, next, we'll go to social icons. A couple of things we're going to do here is we want to align them center. Uh, and then you can see they're sort of grayed out. That means that we have not assigned any links to them yet. So for the sake of shorthanding, I'm just going to kind of fake these links. And you can see them light up as I do it. Okay, so now we've got colors, which are great, but we kind of don't want that. So we'll come over here. This is the settings for the social icons block. I'm going to go here to styles. And I want to change these to all black. And so uh, we can do things like this. You can do, that's bad for accessibility, of course. Uh, you could do different options like logos only, pill shape. Uh, you can even do outline. And I'll, if you take off the background color and do something like this, then they become outlined. So, uh, but in the spirit of keeping things as we've designed them, We'll go back to that. Uh, okay, so we'll see here that there's some spacing here in between uh, my name and the text. This is because block app is applied within the group, which means um, by nature of the way the theme is set up, there's a 30 pixel spacing in between every block. Uh, what you can do is go into the block here, dimensions, select margin. If we unlink this, we can then change this the margin on the top of that particular block, which then allows that to kind of go up. So this here is the author, the post, well, yeah, the author box. I'm going to hit update, and then I'm going to go back to the front end, and we'll just see that we've essentially built that. Now, again, there's some extra spacing here than we see here. Uh, similarly, I will go up to this. I will come down to margin, and I will... You know, if I want it right up against, I could. If I wanted to do a little bit, I think 
that's what we have. And so we'll do that and you can now see. And of course, because we want to have a little fun, we can also do all kinds of really interesting, fun, stylistic things with this. We can change the border to dots and so on. So uh, if you like the coupon look, you could do something like this. So I will back that up and hit update again. And so we've got our author box. Uh, in the spirit of showing how simple it is to just flip this down to like the black version, uh, I'm going to select the group. So it's the whole thing. Uh, I will go here to the group settings. I'm going to change the background to black. Oh no, what happened? Well, very easy to take that, change that to um, the text white. If you have any links in there, I would also suggest just changing those to white just in case. Uh, you can see the social icons have changed. So uh, we will do this. We will invert. We'll add black. Uh, and just to clean things up, this has a border on it from before. We don't need the border. So I'll just come here and hit reset, which blanks out the border. Uh, if we do update, come back up here. And of course, the picture is hard. Um, now, one, one small caveat, and this is an issue I plan to actually submit to GitHub for the Gutenberg plugin. Um, the avatar block does not have support for border. It'd be really nice if I wanted to do like a white border around this just to kind of give it some frame. Uh, but I did find out that that is not a setting. Uh, I would love to see that as a setting. Uh, so actually, I stand corrected. Uh, 31 pixels is not what we want. So um, I didn't realize that was an additional setting. So there we go. Now that looks good, black and white. So lots of things you can do. I, I'm going to take a break and allow for questions. Um, Sam, if I can pop the, the chat open, or if you don't mind just asking the questions, I'd be happy to go through and talk through this. There aren't any questions in the chat right now, Brian. Um, there was a clarification over whether this is, if you're using Gutenberg or not. Um, yeah, gotcha. And then um, I do actually have a question. What version of WordPress are you using in this demonstration? Uh, I am using the latest version of WordPress, so WordPress 6.2, um, which I think, from what I remember, Frost requires it just because there are things that Frost leverages in WordPress 6.2, so you can't activate Frost unless you have 6.2 installed. Uh, and at this point, because we're deeming Frost as a production-ready uh, theme out of the box, I do not have the Gutenberg plugin active. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. All right. So we have the author box here. And if I, as I start to build the next one, if for some reason uh, a question pops up, then we can come back and uh, address that also. So uh, newsletter sign up. I am a uh, ConvertKit fan, uh, friends with Nathan Berry, the CEO, and think that ConvertKit is a wonderful email marketing tool. Uh, the gist of building this box works regardless of who you use, whether it's MailChimp or AWeb or HubSpot or whomever, uh, we're basically going to be building the same sort of structure as we did with the, the author box. Um, but I will go into the newsletter signup page that is built. And this is also very simple. I'm going to just start with a group. I'm going to start with the heading. We're going to just say news, oops, letter sign up. Uh, I will copy and paste the text to keep it simple. So inside that group, I'm going to add a paragraph, which is that copy. Uh, and then this here, uh, I will walk through. Uh, this requires custom HTML block. Uh, this is JavaScript code that ConvertKit generates. Um, so if you have, again, a Weber, or MailChimp, or there may even be some of these platforms that have their own block where you can actually just um, use their, activate their plugin, and then uh, have some sort of little UI UX uh, where it might say, you know, put in the, the MailChimp block. And then from there, because it connects through the API system, you know, it'll drop down a list of your form to include. But this is sort of the manual version of that. Uh, and so we've got that. These are the three things that we have in the newsletter sign up. Uh, similarly, I'm going to just go ahead and add a border. I will also add some padding. Newsletter sign up, I want to center. This paragraph text, I also want to center. Uh, and because I'm sort of a, the way this two lines reads, uh, 
the line height, you can see there's a little bit different line height here. I think in general paragraph, the 1.75 that Frost has works, but in smaller sections, it doesn't. So I am inside the paragraph block. I'm going to come over here to typography and click on line height. because I want to make that just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do 1.5 just looks a little better in my opinion. Um, and I'm going to hit update and we can see where we're at. So, and this section right here is the, the, the JavaScript code that you build your form and convert kit. You can change the colors there and make some setting changes there. Uh, now it's also possible, and I do this often, uh, where, uh, with convert kit in particular, you can grab JavaScript code. You can get the, the full HTML code. And often I'll do that where I'll, I'll download that and strip out a lot of stuff from the HTML, like styling that comes with it. Cause I want to style it myself. Um, an example of that would be, um, seen here on my personal website. This is that similar code. This is really inheriting all of the, uh, input, uh, styling and the button styling from the theme because I wanted to look a very specific way. So this is also convert kit code. It's all hard coded, uh, HTML. So that's an example. Uh, you can see this is sort of like the generic convert kit form, which is generally easy for people to uh, implement. Um, and so, and then, uh, similarly to change the coloring in all of this, I'm inside the group. Uh, let's say I want to go blue. I would just do, well, that's not going to work because we'll do this instead because the button itself is blue. So we wouldn't see our button. See, we don't see the button. So if we change this background to maybe the darker color, that might be not the greatest accessibility. We'd have to run a test on that, but just to show quickly how it's done. And that is the newsletter sign up. And I'm going to do something really fun at the end here. So uh, I'll wrap this all together into like a, a nice little bow and, and to kind of put it into practical terms um, as well. And it's worth noting, uh, while some of these uh, block patterns or these groups generally end up inside of templates, the templates that are found within the site editor, I generally just, it's easier to just go into like a page or a post and I usually build out all my things there and then I'll copy it all and move it over. I'll show this all uh, as I get through all four of them because uh, I think that'll be really cool for people to see. But just because I'm so used to the general page editor, that's generally where I build all this stuff out. So any questions on the newsletter sign up? Yes, uh, there's a question. Why is the top box uh, shorter than the other one? So what are the differences in like the padding or the margin or whatever? Uh, the top box. I think that's referring to like the one with- Oh, the... oh, 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 yeah. yeah like, yeah. I, I think I just select selected, I didn't grab the, the medium padding. So again, this is built into Frost. Each one of these steps is 20 pixels. And so for example, like that's 20 pixel padding. This is 40, 60, 80, and 100. Um, so like we could see if we did 100, it puts 100 all the way around it. Now, if you want it uh, on the sides at 100, but the top, not so much, uh, WordPress allows you to unlink them to where you could do something like this, which is always super helpful. So you've got the 100 pixels padding on the left and the right, and then the 20 on the top. Uh, now to demonstrate, oops, what I was talking about with the responsiveness, let's see if I can swing this. I'm going to duplicate this just to make sure. So this box up here has a hundred pixels padding. I'm going to inspect and get a little bit nerdy here. We can see, so that box has all of this right here. So these are the, the presets that are um, built within the theme JSON file. Now, if I click on one of these, you can see what this uh, preset actually does is inside a theme JSON, it's defined using the clamp function, which says uh, a normal view, like 100, which is like the max, but reduce it down to 60 pixels on smaller view. So what I'll do is I'll pull this out of this and we can see the 100 pixels that is around the entire group. As I reduce this, it responds down so that it's not 100 pixels because 100 pixels on a phone would look really, really bad. And like your text would like literally take up six lines. And so this is what's called intrinsic design, which is sort of setting things up in a way where 
Uh, you don't have to do like a media query. Like, you know, if it's under a certain amount of pixels, only add this kind of padding. Uh, and so that clamp function is called, uh, it's part of the fluid spacing uh, system that Frost leverages. And so, uh, as, as you can see, even on the ones below it, um, everything breaks down nicely. So other questions? I do not see any other questions right now, Brian. Perfect. Uh, notification bar. So this is gonna be kind of hard, like hard to see. Generally, and I should have pulled one up as an example, uh, at the top of a header we see, and I know the question that's gonna get asked and I don't have the answer to it, but I'll, I'll get there in a second. Uh, so generally at the top of websites, sometimes you see these like little notification bars, uh, also known as the hello bar from way back in the day. Uh, that was like a, a thing where you just put a little notification. And so uh, I'm gonna go in here and show how that gets built. And again, we'll, these are meant to be in you know the site editor, like the template parts in the header. Uh, I build them out here just so that I can sort of see what I'm doing. And it's because it's very easy to copy and paste. So I will break this list down. So each one of these is within a group because we wanna be able to do some things with the group. Uh, and so inside of the group is a row. I'll explain why we use a row also. And inside that row is the paragraph. You can see it highlighted and then the button below it. So uh, we will start with our group. We're gonna select the group. You can see by default, the group is the content width. Uh, we'll fix that in a minute. Inside of that, we have a row block. And we have a paragraph sample. Well, I'll fill it in when we're done. And then also inside of that roadblock is a button. So I'll just type that in, get started. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna update this. So as you can see, this looks significantly different than what we see here. We're gonna fix that. Um, so I'm gonna go to the group, as you can see, there is a setting option here for the width of the group. I want to make it full width because I, I, this surrounds the whole thing. Uh, this is that black section. And so because of that, I'm going to change that group to black. And then uh, I want the text, to, oops. I want the text to be white. And if I had any links in there, not I'm using a button, but if I had links instead, I'd also want them to be white or you could change them to something different if you want. Uh, and so uh, again, we still have a lot of, places to go. All right, so I'm gonna change the text here. And so as we can see, the row, which wraps the paragraph and the button still is only, it, it by default, it inherits the, the content width, which is I think 640. Uh, we want this to just say, let's just go 1200 just in case. Like in other words, um, we wanna at most, and I'm gonna update this just so we can see what we're looking at. Uh, and so this is what we've got. So everything is like left aligned. This is the, the, uh, that 1280 I was talking about. You can see there like it's or 1200 in frost, excuse me. And so we want to do a few things here. We want to center everything. We want to reduce the size of the font in the paragraph. We want to, um, reduce the size of the padding and the button and add some padding to itself. Uh, I'm going to actually. Just add a space to help we can see what we're up to. Okay, so we're inside of the group. We want to add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom of it. Um, so we'll maybe just do something like this. Uh, this down here is using uh, the predefined font size of 16, which is the extra small. So we'll just, uh, I'm in the paragraph now. I'm going to go down to extra small. And again, you can see everything's still sort of the alignment's wink. So uh, before we get to that, I'm gonna go to the button uh, and you can see padding, we've got five pixels, top padding, and then down here, uh, we've got the small. So uh, if I go to the button and I go to the settings, I'm down here in padding, I can break these open. Uh, and because the first step in vertical is still too big, that's why I pop this open. That first step is 10. Uh, and so I wanna just change that down to five. And then uh, I think down here we had, extra small. And I think the font size I also changed inside of the button. Uh, I changed it to 14 just because we really want to keep it small. Uh, and so if you go to the font size inside of the button, we could do that. I'm going to hit update and we can just see where we're at. 
Okay, again, you can see uh, this row is still in alignment left. We're almost there. Um, and it looks like the padding and top and bottom of the group itself is off. So I use 15 and 30. Uh, so let's address that first. I am inside the group. Uh, I want to change the top padding to 15, the bottom padding to 15. Um, and just because of, see how this goes up against the side here? Uh, in mobile view, we want to make sure that there's a little bit of padding on the side so that uh, it never goes up against the side of the screen. So I usually just use 30, which is the, the traditional block gap um, inside of Frost. And so now I want to select the whole row. And what I want to do is, um, you can see here, it, the, the row says, hey, justify the items inside of the row left. We want to center them, which we're almost there. Uh, and we can see here, there's a little bit of space here, but there's more space here. And that's because inside of this row is block gap, which puts that 30 pixels that comes by default there. Uh, and since I have the row selected, I will go to the settings here. See where it says block spacing? That's the same thing as block gap. Um, I'm going to change that maybe to 10. And that's what reduces that. So this obviously is an example of like what that spacing does. So if we go to 10 and I hit update and then I refresh the notification bar, now we've got what we're looking for. And of course, to get this version of it, uh, you would just remove the background color. You could add top and bottom border uh, as this one does. And this is a little bar for notifications. Any questions on this one? Yes, there are a few questions. Um, well, one observation actually, mm -hmm. and I, I just noticed this too. I don't know why we both noticed this at the same time, but maybe it's because you're using it, is the breadcrumb feature on the bottom for going between down here. The different, yeah. I don't think that I've ever noticed that that's a thing. So just another another cool way to navigate blocks. Yes. Um, and you use do you use that often, Brian? Uh, I actually use that more than I do. This is more jarring to kind of do some things. Huh. So like if I'm somewhere here, it's just easier to say, okay, um, th this is the whole group, or you know, I'm inside this. I just want to select the row. Um, that breadcrumb thing is extremely useful, and I use it all the time. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I just love, this is the value of seeing people build mm -hmm. and seeing the way that they do it is just learning all these, these different little tricks. Yes. Um, there is another question. Is it possible to change alignment of elements in a row after stacking on mobile? Um, and then the like follow-up to that is on the desktop, they're left and right, for example, and on mobile, they're centered. Is there a way to solve that? Or is that something that is requ requires CSS right now? Okay, so I think I understand the. Let's start with the this question first. So, um, so we've got this content centered uh, inside of the justification. We're inside of the row block down here. You can see which one's sort of selected uh, up here in layout. Um, this is where we started. If you wanted to align everything right, we could. This what it does is it centers everything, puts it together, and centers it. But I believe the question you're asking is this magic button, which basically takes the items in the row and adds space between and pushes it out to the um, the extent of the container. And because the row right here, um, we've selected wide width as the the row container is 1,200 pixels wide. It pushes things out left and right. And I'll go to the front end so we can see what this looks like, um, like that. And so, yeah. and this is useful. Like if you did something different than a notification bar, like above your header, if you wanted to like add, I don't know, some, some text here and then like social media icons here, this is a good way to get everything in alignment. And what I'll also do, um, and why rows are sometimes better than columns is, and I'm going to reduce this so we can see how this breaks down in mobile. Okay, and I'll explain this. So right now you see things jamming up against one another. And that is because there's an option in the row right here, allow to wrap to multiple lines, which I didn't select. Uh, so if we update that and I come back, what it does is, oops. Now it allows it to wrap multiple lines, which then does what I think we're looking for. So if you use the column, I think what happens is this button goes all the way off to the right. The alignment's kind of weird and off. And so 
in this case, the roadblock was, works really, really well. Now, if the question is, can you take items that are sort of set apart, unlike this one down here on mobile and make them centered? The only way to do that is to go through the alignment method, which is just kind of keeping them together in the center here. Uh, utility classes could very easily be added to each of these two elements. Like if you, I think has text, has dash, text dash align center uh, is a, a class built in. So you could, and um, let's just see if this, this uh, no, no, that will only work on mobile. So you could use custom CSS to do those things. Um, like write your own media query and then say has text align center, you know, inside of this paragraph, uh, under advanced, you could type in like has text align center, and then go into custom CSS and inside of like a media query, uh, define that. Um, and that I think would solve the problem if that's how you wanted to go about it. Any questions else? I don't see anything else. The question I thought was going to be asked, and I've yet to find the answer, um, I'm sure it's just custom code, is, is there a way most of these header notification bars have like on the right side, like a little X, like close it out kind of thing, tied together with cookies and whatever. Um, they're out of the box. That that's not a possible way to do things. Uh, I'm sure very easily with some custom code that can be done would require a little bit of a build, but um, because a lot of notification bars, people want them dismissible. Um, the conversion folks don't, right? Because you always want it there. Uh, so uh, I have not, there's no WordPress core feature that allows for an X to close out that notification bar. Okay, so uh, last one we're gonna do uh, is what's called a product box. And uh, completely on brand, I've built a product uh, that I'm looking to sell the Folklore album by Taylor Swift. And so what I will do is go into that one. Um, similarly, uh, this was built sort of uh, just with groups and this one uses columns, so it's a little bit different. Uh, and so I will pop open list view. Um, we're gonna open the group. Inside of the group is the columns and inside the columns, Obviously a column image is on the one side, the right side is the rest of the stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna go back here and I will build this. So we've got the group block. Uh, and inside the group block, I said we were gonna do columns because I, uh, we'll start with 50-50, but I'll change it. Um, left side, we wanna add an image. Just so happens I've got that ready. Uh, and copy this. So the right side, we're gonna put a heading, Folklore by Taylor Swift. And after that, I got a paragraph text that I stole. And then we're gonna also add a button. So by Folklore. Now, as you can see, and I think this is where people start to understand like how powerful the settings are and how folks know how th this can be built sort of on the fly is um, to be able to take this down to this within a matter of a few clicks is, is pretty pretty important. Um, WordPress allows that to be done. Uh, and that makes me as a designer super excited because it's like, all I got to know is the elements I need in a section. I can throw them in there and then I can style them without having to use any custom generally any custom CSS or any, any code, any file uploads, FTP or whatever. And this is sort of the power that we're starting to see uh, unfold here. So uh, I'm gonna, I've got the entire group selected. Uh, I wanna add my border because I'm a border fan. And again, I'm gonna add some spacing around there. Uh, I'm gonna just give us an update so we can see where we're at. Okay, obviously we wanna change the width of the columns to be a little bit more um, and better. So we're gonna, as a reminder, come down here, I've got that 35% and I'm checking the column width down here. So, uh, I click the image and here's how to use breadcrumbs. I know what's in it. Sometimes hard to select the column itself. So I come down to the breadcrumbs to grab the column to be selected. Uh, I'm going to type 35 here. I don't want pixels for obvious reasons. 
percentage. Um, and we can see here inside of this column, there's, all, there's the 30 pixel block gap. I keep talking about the block space and that comes by default. I want everything inside of this column to have the same smaller um, sizing. So what I'm gonna do is go into the column, again, using the breadcrumb to select the column, going over to settings, selecting block spacing. And I just, I wanna do 20 pixels even seems like maybe too much. So maybe I'll just do 10. And again, line height to me is a little bit off in the context of just uh, two lines. So going into the paragraph, selecting line height, changing that to 1.5. Uh, I'll do a quick update and we can see where we're at. Almost there. Uh, this button's a little big. I want that to come down here. The text up here is a little too big. Uh, I think that was the H2. So as a reminder, I've got extra small and large padding. So I'm gonna come down here to extra small and large uh, down here, 24 pixels. So I go back to where I wanna change it, can make that down. And here's something that's also really interesting and cool about uh, columns. Now we can see by default, it aligns everything to the top, but because I kinda wanna come up with this look, what that is, is if you go to columns and you click on this icon, you can align them to the middle, or you can align them to the bottom if you wanted to, which it probably has some use cases, but generally I like to do middle. And so now that I've done middle, I go to update and I'm gonna refresh. It centers vertically, you know, the contents here. Uh, this, because it's the tallest one, doesn't need to be aligned, but usually if uh, this kind of has just a better look. And so, this would be a product box. I'll, I'll pause for questions and then we'll go into how do we use these and what do we do with these now that we've built them? So any questions specifically around uh, the product box? I don't see any questions, Brian, yeah. but you're doing great. This is super cool to watch you build it. Cool. Um, uh, as oh, a, actually, a, sorry to yeah. interrupt you. There was a question that just came in. Uh, can we yep. see it on mobile, please? Uh, yes. Let me let me duplicate this. So this should because uh, there's two columns and this content is aligned left, it should fall down gracefully. So what it does is a certain breakpoint, it just stacks them um, as we see here. And ideally, at some point, there'd be a way to like center this on mobile. Um, I think at some point we'll start to see, responsive controls being added to blocks. Uh, we don't have that yet. Again, you could do the same similar thing with the utility class saying if, if is mobile basically center these items. Um, There's a, another related question about mobile actually. Is there a yep. way to define the max image size for mobile without CSS at this time? Uh, so like in, for instance, if you don't want this to be as big and we just wanted to, I'm gonna inspect the browser and do something like, like whatever max width, 200 pixels or something like that. Um, we would obviously want to center that. No, there, there is not a way to do that with mobile um, without using custom CSS. And another question, are groups and columns both using Flexbox? Do you know? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. I keep thinking like it's not CSS grid, but it's Flexbox. Uh, I do think um, there investigating using different types of um, CSS systems to, to do certain things. Um, but as far as I know, it's it's Flexbox. Cool, and then there was one more, uh, or just a clarification. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not using WooCommerce, right? Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, this is, um, in this case, this was just, a, I wanna sell a product and it links off to any place, you know, Gumroad or whatever um, kind of thing, external link. Um, I cool. thought about the WooCommerce thing. It's a big, this was more about selling one product than it was to, to do a store. Um, although that's good fodder at some point for a different workshop is just how to do WooCommerce things. So that is definitely, definitely. something that's on my radar. Awesome. I don't see anything else, Brian. So Frost comes with, and I'm going to be adding more. One of the settings, this is a little bit of an aside, but just to kind of show some cool stuff. Um, 
Frost comes with a, um, let's double check that I'm, oh, I didn't, I took it out of this one. Um, some, some themes and Frost will uh, have what's called a custom block style, which allows you to, um, and I believe the images might have them. Like you can see here, like if you select a block, there's this thing called styles and you could do things like style it, like at a, not just do things like border or border radius, but like apply like a full style to something. Um, and so groups in some cases have custom styles, like where there would be like box shadows and things like that, where you could like select this group and apply like a predefined box shadow, like around that. So like maybe you wanted to like stand out or whatever. Um, there are some cool things that are coming and in some themes already are there and in frost will become them. Uh, and so things like that are also coming, uh, for example, a custom block style for the button. We can see if we wanted to do an outline, we could do an outline, things like that are pretty cool. Um, again, that's using a block style here. All right. So. Let's start with the author box. How do we actually use this? Because we're not going to write a blog post and put an author box in the blog post. That doesn't make sense. This is something that we want maybe at the end of every every blog post, right? Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is start to show sort of the application of how these particular things can be used. Um, so what I will do, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select the... Um, this one. So I've selected the whole group, this whole author box. And because I built it here, that's just kind of where it's stashed. Generally, I wouldn't even have this like published. This would just be like a draft page where I could just build things. Um, so I select that, hit the three dots up here and then and say copy block. What that does is it copies the contents of everything inside of this group block. Now, what is where this comes into play is if you come over here to appearance and click on editor, you're now taken to the site editor. And if you click on templates, um, in this case, we, you know, single blog posts is where we might want to use something like this. So I'm going to go in here and edit it. And I've got my post title, my date, my content tags, categories, and then comments. I'm like, you know, I'd really like to post an author box, uh, at the end of every blog post. Um, and so I will go right here. I'm going to just add a block. I, I say a group and literally can just paste that block here. And so what I will do is save this template. So it's saving the single template now. I've put this group block in. Uh, and I'm going to come over here. This is a sample blog post. And now I've got my author box on every single blog post. At the bottom, you can move it up and down or at the bottom of things if you want. You can style it. You can do whatever. Uh, and because this is using the generic blocks, if you have a multi-author blog, whoever wrote that blog post, that is what will be populated in this box. And so everything that you've done um, inside of that box will be uh, shown on every blog post. Now, um, I've also created a newsletter signup. And because I want to collect newsletter email addresses, uh, we will similarly go back to that page, uh, the newsletter signup box. Uh, we'll go down to this dark one. So I've got the group selected. Um, I'm going to copy it. I'll go back to the single post. Um, I think it's more important to collect an email address than show people who I am. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to hit paste. I will resave the single file. And now on every blog post, you've got the newsletter sign up box and you've got the author box. Of course, you can change, flip them up and down and put them wherever you want. Um, There's a quick, quick question. Yes. Um, why is a group needed to copy? Like, do you have to copy it into a group in the template or? Uh, well, that's how it's built because these items, these blocks need a wrapping component. That's why the like when we started building them, we started everything in a group, which is what gives the background black, or in this case down here, it wraps all of these blocks in a way where you can style like the outside and the inside sort of a thing. So that's why we, you know, so for instance, uh, I've can got you this... open up the list view. Sorry, Brian, that yeah. might be helpful too. Cool. Thank you. 
Yes. Okay. So we're on list view of the single template. We've got the header up here. The entire in between header and footer is also wrapped in a group just to kind of compartmentalize things. Uh, we've got uh, also a group here used for the the, the header info, the post header information. We've got the post content uh, grouping the categories and tag. Then we've got our own group of here, and it also allows you to do things very easily to to move you know, the, the entire group up and down, every, all the contents that are inside of it. And so we need a, a way to wrap these things so that we can style the out, like the exterior. So, cause if we took the group and said ungroup and just remove the group, then we wouldn't have the styling that was applied to the group. Got it. Okay. So I think that the confusion is coming with when you copied and pasted it over, um, because this question says, so when you copied the blocks from the page, you did not copy the group from the page, just the content of it. So maybe could you show how you copied it over uh, with that yeah. list view part open? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it again. Um, Thanks, Brian. I, I did uh, newsletter sign up list view open. I did come down here. Where are we? Maybe I accidentally have double double group things. Let's do a little experimenting just down here. Okay, yeah, I think I, I actually accidentally have them double grouped. So technically I still want the, the main group, which is um, here, you go to copy the group because then it cop copies the group and everything inside of the group. And then when you go to the appearance, and maybe this is where the confusion came in, uh, and you click on single, you, in order to insert it somewhere, you kind of have to sort of fake something. And so like you would do that at a block and I would select a group. I mean, you could select anything. It really doesn't matter. Paragraph. And then I would just, where that paragraph group showed up, I would just hit paste and it just kind of takes it over. Maybe that's where the confusion, like why would you create another group? Because you've got to do something to allow yourself to paste it in there. Right. Um, I'm going to ask a question and this might be either outside the scope or might be where you're, exactly where you're going next with this, Brian, which mm -hmm. is if I'm creating all of these cool CTA blocks and I want to like pass it off to a client or something, is there a way to build it into my themes? There's like patterns or something that it can be duplicated in the future outside of like the template. Uh, yes. That that's for probably another workshop. Uh, our our team at WP Engine has a plugin that we're building and maintaining called Create or a uh, um, Pattern Manager, uh, and so that allows you to create patterns sort of within the instance of your theme or your installation. Like create a pattern and then save it, so that when, um, for instance, if you hadn't had it built, um, you could like, you know, come up to the plus and like find the pattern here and then just insert it. So like you could build some of these patterns uh, into your theme. It's very easy to manually also do that. Like if you know how to build a theme, you could create patterns inside of your theme using uh, file file manager and code editor kind of stuff uh, as well. Uh, but I think the idea behind things like pattern manager and stuff we may see in WordPress core is to do it all inside of the editor to where like you could like basically create this group um, this pattern and do something like export to pattern or something where then it would store it in a place where they, it can be inserted anywhere. It's, it's coming. Um, another way, a temporary way, what you could do is you could build something like this and, and then make it a reusable block where then you could take this. Um, and, uh, actually that's a great segue, um, into what I will show next. Um, I'm going to like the product box isn't something we, maybe we don't want to sell Taylor Swift on every blog post. So I'm going to copy the group again. Uh, let's just say in this one post, this is a post about Taylor Swift and I want to, I want to sell it there. So I would just do something like this, put the, the box there. Um, I'm going to update it. And just so we can see where we're at. So this is sort of like uh, an in post way of doing it. Now let's just say I have 10 articles on Taylor Swift and I want to sell the same thing across all 10. I could just take this, um, group, I could do, I could turn it into a reusable block. And what that does is it make it sort of synced, which means, um, this is now like, it's sort of like a pattern, but it's kind of not a lot of confusion sometimes with WordPress, 
But what it allows me to do is insert this reusable block in wherever I want in each of the 10 blog posts. And if something changes or if I have a typo or if I want to change a link or an image, you can change it once and then it'll sync it to every location in which that reusable block is on uh, your site. And so, um, and then I'm going to show one more thing and then we've got a few more minutes for questions. Uh, so we've got our blog post that has that uh, notification bar. I'm going to just come in here. I'm going to cop. Yeah, so this one's right. So I'm going to copy the block. Uh, I will go into editor. And this time I want to go into template parts. Um, so I'm going to edit the header because what I want to do is I want to put it at the top. I'm going to pop open list view so you can see what I'm doing. Um, sometimes it's hard to just figure out where to put things. And so I'm going to do something like this. I'm just going to paste it here. And what you could do, you can drag and drop. Um, there we go. And so now I've got that. This is the main header group. And then this is my notification bar. Um, I'm going to hit save. And what we'll do is we'll come back here and we can see. And again, I think this was the one that we tweaked the the thing. So I'm going to do this. So this now there's the header and that will show up on every page. So if I go into a WordPress page or the blog post, and so this blog post has everything we've built in it. We, we built the notification bar up here at the top. As we scroll down, we're selling our product. We come down here. We've allowed people to sign up for our newsletter because we've written such great copy around Taylor Swift. And if you want to connect with me because I'm a Taylor Swift fan, here's how you can do it. So um, in this case, we have a blog post that we can share that has, well, in addition to the ones maybe up here <laughs> or in the footer, several call to actions. And so now we've got a functioning website that has um, some cool design features and leverages all WordPress core blocks. So everything that we did here today uh, only leverages WordPress core blocks. There was no need to do anything else uh, to do it. So, uh, there was a, another question, Brian, um, mm -hmm. have you tried to set sticky for the header group? So I don't know exactly what the question is, but also, or what the context is there, but also, um, one way to, to try that out is that CTA, can you make it sticky? So that sticks to the top. As yeah. So, yeah. So I'm inside of the header template part and, and position sticky is, um, still somewhat experimental and there's some caveats like it only shows up if it's got the capability the capability of being stuck uh, so i'm going to see if this works so i've got the group selected for the header notification bar and i'm over here in settings and we see this position thing um and one of the things we can do is position sticky it so in an ideal world i'll hit save go to the front end scroll down and that bar will stick um we'll see how well Okay, so in this instance, um, and there's different ways this can be done. So what it's doing is it's sticking until the next container happens. Um, so it sticks until like we get to this group, which is not what we want. Um, and so again, there are some caveats. Uh, let's unstick this, maybe the header. This might be a little more of a, an example of what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, yeah, see, yeah, there's still some gotchas with the position sticky, which is, I think, why um, maybe because there's there's no wrapping container around it. So I think it's it's novel in concept, but in the execution of it, it's often difficult to control and in every case scenario. So, um, but it, it, let's, well, let's, I'm going to just try to remove this and see if this works. Yeah, yeah, it still doesn't work. So still some gotchas. We're, this is a WordPress situation, not necessarily a theme thing, by the way. Limitation, so. There's a lot of uh, questions and comments. So I'm going to try to pull them all together, Brian. Sure. Um, someone mentioned that the WordPress sticky elements seem to be heavily dependent upon where in your layout 
the yes. sticky element lays. So there's just that note. I think you were just talking about that. Yep. Um, and then someone else asked, can you describe your way to enhance navigation in Frost or full set edit, or any sort of block theme for creating something like a mega menu or just a more robust header, I think? Um, the, the short answer is there's really no great WordPress way to do it yet. Um, I presume if there aren't already blocks for like taking over, um, maybe just navigation here by opening it up to do some things. Um, but for like mega menus, that's definitely, uh, you know, I have seen some, uh, exploration around what happens at a minimum, like on mobile, you know, like as an example, On mobile view, it's just like a pretty basic, this sort of a thing. Sometimes we see like these really well-designed websites that have like these full blown, you know, content, content within that. Um, that's not part of WordPress core yet. Um, but I've seen some exploration around somehow making this like a block area where you could like do all kinds of kind of fun and cool stuff here. Um, but that's not anything yet that's available. So again, a lot of custom stuff can be done. Um, and so I think there are some of those limitations that uh, exist. In other words, if a client says, I have to have it a certain way, there might have to be some concessions made. Um, but but yeah, I, I've yet to see anything like that. Awesome. Yeah, we're actually getting tons of good ideas for future workshops over here that I'm saving away. Yes, perfect. I don't see any other questions or comments though. Okay, cool. Just trying to see if there's anything else within the last minute or two we can um, zing through. But uh, again, for the sake of just demonstrating it, uh, let's just say for some reason you're not a, a fan of blue. Uh, what's When you're inside of the site editor, uh, this little circle up here is called global styles. And what it allows you to do is control colors. The, the frost theme ships with this palette. Uh, so you could change this a couple of ways. You could just say, eh, I want to change everything to pink. So every instance where you have blue, you would now have pink, except this, this is baked into the convert kit form I built offsite. So that's why that's still blue. Um, so it, that's the primary color. Uh, I'm going to reset this. Frost also has um, what's called style variations, which are sort of preset color schemes. Um, and so what, uh, actually let me get out of, let me get into this view is actually perfect. So frost has these sort of a set eight preset colors, which means, um, you can select pre-select. It comes with a, a certain green that was picked with it. Uh, and you can click through it and just have presets. This is. Uh, less ideal if you're turning it over to a client and you need like a very specific hex code. This is more of a thing. Hey, if a user just wants to use something and just kind of change colors or have some options, um, the color style variations are one way to do that. So you can see it kind of just goes throughout. Awesome. One other question I think that we yep. maybe have time for, uh, how safe is it to edit patterns for customizing beyond using something like pattern manager, for example, the PHP files in the slash patterns folder. So just going right in and, and, uh, editing those. Generally you need to know what you're doing. Um, in most cases, um, editing the, the code within a pattern file is difficult to do because you've got to change things in certain ways. It's easy to just build it in the editor and then export and copy and paste into the um, the thing. Like, so for instance, if you want to create a new pattern, I would just like duplicate a file, change the header at the top, blank out all the PHP code. I would go into, and I'll just do it really quickly. Um, and this is actually how I build patterns and put them into themes. Uh, so for instance, when I go to implement this, I would create like a blank author box pattern file. I would select the group. I would hit copy block. And then just for the sake of showing it, I would pretend like I had a pattern here. And then if you hit paste, it, it gives you all the code you need to be inside of that pattern. And so you can see like, you know, there might be some things that you change. Oh, I want to change the border here, but there's two different places. There's the actual markup and then up here inside of the code is where it also needs to be changed. So if you don't change it in both places, then it chucks an error. So 
Um, which is why I've been doing this for two years with Frost. So like I know how to build and manipulate these patterns in code. Um, but I think the beauty behind pattern manager is that you could do all of this just in the back end and just saving it without having to like deal with any of this stuff, creating files or copying and pasting code and whatnot. So awesome. Well, very, um, whoops, <laughs> still got our pink. Um, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining. Uh, we are going to, I learned a lot, Sam, so I'm going to submit. Yes. Um, we're going to be, uh, including this on our YouTube channel, the replay of this. So if you want to go back and watch what we've done, I know sometimes I go through things somewhat quickly, um, just because, uh, in the spirit of time, uh, but in addition to that, we're going to be, I'm going to be writing up some sort of a blog post as well for the wpengine.com slash builders website that we have, uh, which will also have the YouTube replay probably early next week uh, is when that'll be out. So uh, once the YouTube is done, we'll share it on social media uh, as well as embed it into the blog post. So uh, again, thank you for um, for attending. If you have any questions, you can follow me at bgardner on Twitter. Um, hit me up and send me a DM and uh follow up with that. And we'd love to help talk, help everybody understand how to build with blocks. So uh, thank you again and hope everyone has a great day.